Hey everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. I want to talk about a classical fine artist, somebody that isn't a contemporary illustrator of any kind, because I want to really study what the historical figures, the legends in our industry did, and that we still, as artists, use their techniques. So one of them, one of my favorites rather, is Jean Leon Jerome. Now what makes him so significant and why I chose him over a lot of other fine artists? Now that's not to say I won't go back to some of my other favorites such as William Bouguereau or Rembrandt, but Jean Leon Jerome is, I feel, somebody who really established a style that a lot of concept artists, especially, look into today. In fact, if you look at his work from hundreds of years ago versus what concept art we have now, you'll find a lot of similarities because he established a lot of things with composition, color uses, and scenery that it looked very cinematic. It's way ahead of its time. So two things I want to talk about with John Leon Jerome here, of a ton of different things I could say. Um, first of all, I want to talk about multiple figures and I'm going to talk about implied movement. So similar to my Bobby Chu video previously, multiple figures is something that it sounds easy to do, but it's insanely hard to balance. If you want to look at it from a perspective of rhythm, as with Bobby Chu's video, we can look that, hey, look at these heads. We're being led to look through these heads and then towards the character. Well, there's a one, one little guy here. I should, might as well just draw it here. So you can see there's a movement of rhythm here. It's a very calm scene. Every, um, every portion of the scene is a very meditative um, prayer type of almost, well, I guess it is religious, very religious scene. And that comes down to a very calm flow with how the figures are arranged. Um, also, uh, if you notice other paintings too, having very calm divides, so verticals, horizontals, a lot of horizontals here, it creates an implied calmness, as if everything is stagnating, everyone is still, and it's a very meditative scene. So, now there's one thing that Bobby Chu's illustration doesn't have. Not to say that it's worse, but it's a sense of space. Now, Bobby Chu's previous picture that I studied and analyzed, all the creatures are on one plane. So they're on one branch that is facing directly towards the camera. But in this case, what John Leon Jerome does is having so many figures that you can lead through them into space. So obviously we have these foreground figures, right? These are obviously the closest people, but look at how masterful it is for uh, Jerome to create distance based off of these multiple figures. So something like this. So, it's masterful proportions, masterful, to be able to do this over many figures as well as bring you into space and balancing the composition is absolutely amazing. It's deliberate. And every single figure, even the ones in the background, do just a few strokes. Let's zoom in here. Look at that. Now, of course, like if, if we had the actual size of the painting, maybe these would be a bit more detailed, but you notice these are just flat designs. 
that's something a lot of concept artists nowadays do. They really simplify. They really know how to create the scenes and they simplify based on where your peripheral vision is. So since we are focusing on this character, we don't have to have so many details here. In fact, it's better that way. We are creating a very realistic scene because um, as with my other videos, I talk about the flaws of human vision. We're not perfect. So in order to create that sense of vision, the focus has to be there. This is something that cameras are very bad at doing. And even if you are an incredible photographer, it's still missing something. And the best painters are able to capture this look. So when it comes to multiple figures, again, look into what you're trying to achieve of it and make sure that those figures, every single one, have a purpose. They're purposefully balancing the composition as well as creating a space. Now notice as well, I want to make a quick point. The colors on these um, attires they're more contrasting in the foreground, whereas the background, they're very faded away. So I'm sure you've heard of the rules of as they move further in the background, you take some of that background gradient into the figures in the back. So notice here, I'm going to zoom in here. Look at that beautiful detail on the dress here. Now look directly towards this character. Now there are still some strokes. Look at, look at that beautiful flow. Very, very subtle usages of strokes. And then once we go into the background, you get just a few strokes. And then in the background, it's complete. You look at this figure. We are associating these as figures, by the way, because the silhouettes are perfect. Very good silhouettes. Again, we look at the foreground figure, and then we're like, oh... It must be just another one of these prayer prayer priests or <laughs> prayer priests. One of these um one of these uh, people in the background because we are associating this and relating it into figures that are simply silhouettes. So again, this is something a lot, a lot of concept artists nowadays are using. And they're really really and, and Jerome is just masterful at creating scenes and this is before we they had movies so like you gotta understand this is incredible anyways I want to move on into the second point implied movement now similar to the previous video and even in this video uh, earlier I talk about the rhythm of the heads and everything is creating an implied flow of movement in order to create that flowing scene. Now, I'm going to talk about something incredibly advanced. This is something that um, Jason Manley of conceptart.org taught um, me through a video. The implied movement goes far beyond just having heads in a certain pattern. It goes deeper and there is something where we have to really look into the masses and where the colors are cre um, creating that movement. So I've said before, color variation is very important because you don't want to have an isolated instance on one part of your painting you want to spread your colors around in order to create a more unified image. Now, there is... Now, I, I want to say there are rules, hard line rules when it comes to composition. But this one is a very useful tool in order to um, save your compositions in a way. It's a lot of cases, this will work for you. And it's the idea of implied movements throughout the entire canvas. Now, it sounds a bit vague. I'm going to give you a few examples. So notice 
the darkest values. If I were to zoom out very tiny, what is the implied movement of the dark patterns? It's like this. In order to create a grander sense of scene, you want to not only spread the colors around, you want to spread them across the entire frame. In a lot of cases, unless you masterful, masterfully create a composition otherwise, generally speaking, you want to create a composition where values cut through the entire space of the frame to create an implied movement. This will allow you to create an, an I guess an illusion, or you're, it's, it's, you're implying that you're using the entire space of the canvas properly. Because in a lot of cases, there's a mistake where um, artists, they create an artwork and you could crop the picture and it'll still work, if not work better because there's unnecessary spaces. To create an implied movement of value, you are making sure that is never going to happen because you're using the entire frame, you're spreading all the colors throughout the entire canvas. So we talked about the dark pattern. So, so again, zoom out to create a very nice motion like that. And of course, it diverts into the focal point as well, which is masterfully done. Now let's talk about the midtones. Where is the implied motion of the midtones. Let's zoom out again. Midtones, something like this. Again, a different motion, but I'm hoping you kind of get what I'm going for. It's insanely difficult to do this. Very difficult because you have to justify it logically too. You don't want to just force it. You have to compose, you have to really be the conductor in your, in your compositions in order to create that implied movement. Again, using the entire space effectively, spreading the values and colors around in order to make your eyes move. So the mid-tones are like that, the dark tones are like that. Now we go in the light, the light, self-explanatory, nothing too special here something like this. Or if you want to argue even more, you could just say something like this either. It, either way, like it works. Um, again, beautiful sweeping motion. The entire composition holds some of that value and they're making you look. He, he's, he created a composition so that no matter which value you concentrate on. So let's say I want to focus on the light well, the light goes through the entire composition. Now, if you want to focus on the midtones, well, the midtones are going through the entire composition. You're looking through, you're concentrating on one set of values at any given time. Again, because our, our eyes are flawed, we cannot concentrate on every single color at once. If we focus, I, I want you to experiment it, experiment it too. You look at your, like a messy room, for instance, you look, at maybe the dark values you're gonna not have focus on the lighter values uh lighter objects in your vision or vice versa you look at the light objects you won't look at the dark uh, objects very um clearly so in this case no matter what you focus on you will be creating implied movement and that's a masterful composition from john leandro there are just a ton of examples of his work. He is incredible at compositions. If you are able to really see the implied movement on all his pieces, you will be a master. And I'm not exaggerating. You can study forever on how and what he did in order to create these beautiful compositions. I hope that makes sense. Again, here's the dark motion, here's the mid motion, and here's the light motion. Um, 
have a sweeping motion, never have isolated instances in your scene. Biggest mistake, but it's also a very advanced concept. Anyways, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.